Okay, we are here in the in Queens and demoing the Reflex, which is a project that has been going on for a little while. So tell us about this glorious, flexible, bendable device that you've created here. Yeah, this is uh, this is Reflex. It's uh, the world's first completely wireless, thin film, flexible phone. Um, that also has haptics. Uh, what are haptics? Well, it makes the screen vibrate so you can actually feel the data. So as I'm flipping through these pages here by bending the screen, the faster I bend the screen, the faster the pages go, just like with a book, and I can make them go back. Actually, I can also feel the pages. So I can feel like when one page flips, it goes flick, flick in my, in my, in my hands, which is really nice because it tells me exactly what I'm doing. The, the so, color is um, amazing. Yeah, so this is uh, new technology coming out this year, but uh, we've been working on this for 12 years. We've been working on this notion of uh, flexible screens taking over the computer world for a long, long time. For 12 years? Yeah. So what happened in the 12 years that led you to this? Um, well, obviously we would have done this 12 years ago had we had the screen. Right. But those screens were only just being invented at the time. Right. So we had to wait for literally that long before the, t the screens came available and what we one of the one of the most significant things we we've done is is we've done a lot with projection mm -hmm. so in 2004 we simulated this kind of thing using projection on paper mm -hmm. and you can find it on YouTube it's called paper windows okay. um, and in 2011 we came out with the world's first flexible smartphone that was still tethered and it was e-ink okay uh, called paper phone so we haven't been sitting still, but um, but this is the real deal. So as as a technology grew, you you found new opportunities to create a product like this, and yeah. and and this is the next. I I also think this is the next phase of smartphone or yeah ev evolution in devices. Yeah, and and one of the nice things about these screens is you can actually stick them on products and anything. We call those things display objects, and we're already seeing some of that with the Samsung phones that have sort of an edge around them. right. And that's all stuff that we've experimented with a long time ago and um, come to the conclusion that this will be the f next iteration of computing. So tell me about this device specifically. How does it work? What's, what specs are in this specific one? Um, uh, this, is, um, this is an Android smartphone um, and it's got a, a 1080p um, FOLED. Okay. Um, and so we, we basically run Android's apps on it. And now what's special about it is that um, not only is it thin, but it also has these bend sensors here. And these bend sensors allow it to know when it's being bent and how much it's being bent. And does does the amount of bend dictate how fast the pages turn yes. or how fast like yes. images move? Yeah. Yes, it does. Um, and can, can that be set by the user or is it? Uh, yeah, it can in principle. I mean, it's hard coded here, but yes. Uh, and then what you see here is, unfortunately, there. Um, I don't want to be overly critical of my students, but I can't seem to get them to stop using duct tape uh, for prototypes. So what we're seeing here is is a duct tape that on um, uh, what's called a haptuator. So this is an this is a it's like a speaker, mm -hmm. but it's very low frequency speaker. And so what this does is it allows us to synthesize these kind of haptic uh, experiences uh, directly onto. The panel, so you feel the panel vibrate in in certain ways. Right. So it's like sound, but it's actually the vibration of sound, and um, that's that's it. Um, the the paddles here are are circuit boards to drive the display and a battery. The reason we put them off to the side is, I mean, this is way too big for a phone. Right. But the reason we put them off to the side is so we can emphasize the thinness of the prototype. Um, there isn't really a reason why you could. These are actually quite thin. You can put them behind the screen as well. Mm -hmm. So, so when a manufacturer comes out with something like this, how how do you see that device looking? It will probably be a little thicker than this. Um, it might be a little less flexible. It'd be a little bit more like a hockey puck, you know. Like the thickness of it. No, not puck? the thickness, but I mean that consistency of rubber. Oh, okay, okay. So it'll be more like you know you probably be squeezing it like this, and that's right. about it. And, and one of the reasons for that is that if you if you squeeze this too hard you know, ultimately the display will break. Now what's, what's nice is that I can throw this on the floor and, you know, I could probably even stomp on it. I'm not going to because <laughs> we don't have that many prototypes. But I mean, this is a plastic display, so it doesn't break from throwing it on the floor. 
And I think that's already enough reasons for people to want this. Yeah, of course. So, um, quite frankly, I think that manufacturers are being a little bit overly conservative right now. This could be on the market tomorrow. So what's the hesitation then? I think they're worried about making these flex these circuit boards flexible, which I don't think is necessary. Um, although, I mean, would be cool if we could, obviously, but that's the hard part is to make everything flexible. Right. Uh, flexible batteries exist. I don't think that's the hard part. Um, but the main issue is breakability of the screen when you when you go through really extreme bends. But you know, this is this is pretty bendable. That's so. And awesome. as we've been doing this for how long on this this one? This one's been around since early February. This one is this is still 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 the same one? Yeah. No, this just passed February. Now this is not the one from January. All right. Okay. So this is now two three months old and it's traveled the world and it's been used a, a lot. So it's still fine. Cool. Let's see that in action there, because that's really impressive. See, I'm bending it fairly extremely, and it's all fine. Um, let me show something else. And what's what's battery life in this like? Um, well, it's not very good because we're using. Does this have the touchscreen? Yeah. Um, it's not very good because we have um, awesome. a, a Bluetooth connection with the bend sensors for reasons that you don't want to know because it's kind of silly that we use Bluetooth for that but we do so, so you're playing any, any so it's like battery out. life is like half an hour but there's no real reason why it wouldn't be like an average one so this is Angry Birds what's really nice do you feel that you yeah. see that hear that sorry Ooh. amazing so let me so, do that again so, so you actually feel the game yeah 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 I'll, well I'll be quiet and you can hear it didn't do it fast enough let's do that again oh. fail there you go I love how you bend that so that just make that just makes the whole user experience more interactive yeah on it, every it, level. it allows you to um, it allows you to basically interact with the Z as we call it the Z dimension So who, or who helped you develop this, or what's what's the process behind that? Um, well, the um, um, obviously we sourced the display. Um, mm -hmm. It's an LG display display. Mm -hmm. And uh, other than that, we basically built this in house. Uh, I mean, we're 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 a tech lab, so we're you know we're like uh, like the lab that that gave Steve Jobs the the graphical user interface back in the seventies. Yeah. And this is just the next iteration, and so. We built this stuff ourselves, and uh, we you know we do get a lot of interest, and we've had a lot of press about this. Yeah, um, we, you know whether or not ultimately we're going to be the ones commercializing this is beside the point. We just want to make this happen. And you own patents on that and everything too. Yes, we do. Yeah. Good work. That's yeah. awesome. That's brilliant. It's a it's a beautiful product. Like, and it's I it's it's the next next big thing that will make smartphones more exciting, I think. Yeah, I think right. so too. And so. I think, uh, you know, I think smartphones are getting into the commodity situation now. And in fact, uh, market share is starting to d dissipate to China. Right. So there is a, this is the right time for, for companies to start thinking about different form factors. Beautiful. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome.